So um, Paul Dagnall of University of Dayton, uh, who's uh, I've worked with him before on our some of our webinars, um, is going to talk to us about the, the new commons tool. And I like your title, Paul, authentic uh, rather than forced community. That's that's really good. So and we're seeing your sh your screen share come in. So take it away, Paul. All right. And can you hear me? OK. Yes, we can. We're good. All right, so I guess I'll get started. So like Martin said, we're going to talk about the Commons tool here. I'm Paul Dagnall from the University of Dayton, and I'm in Dayton. I'm not recording from this really sweet looking lake bunker with Dr. Chuck. So, um, and I know well, you know, the only thing you don't want to do when you're doing a lightning talk is talk about how little time and how fast I have to go. So I won't waste any time doing that. Um, so the Commons tool, is what you see on this screen on the right side. So here's a home page in a Sakai course. And on the right side, there's this thing that's called the recent commons posts. And it's sort of a um, Facebook like thing. It, and so just to be clear what we're talking about, it's this thing here on the right. <clears throat> um, a colleague of mine told me that it that people around the Sakai community maybe don't know how this is how this can be used and if it's even there, what you do with it. I don't know if that's true or not. If it's not true and I'm telling you something that you already know, I will give you his name so you can yell at him. Um, but I, for whatever reason, the Commons tool is maybe not as popular as I believe it should be. And I think it can be very effective for teaching. And uh, maybe it's the name, like Commons is a, you know, admittedly kind of boring sounding thing, but it's not boring at all. It's rather cool. So. Um, it's a social networking style tool with replies similar to Facebook posts like you see here. And um, the University of Dayton, we've added a few um, uh, extra customs to it that I'll talk about here in a bit. Um, and you might be saying, you know, why do we need something like this? We have forums tool. And so I'm going to make the case that, you know, forums posts themselves are kind of obfuscated by the structure of where, of where they are in the Sakai uh, course site. So you can see, you know, if you're even in the forums tool, like it doesn't look really social. It's just kind of links. And if you eventually, if you click into the forums tool, then you click inside of the correct topic and then click inside of the correct um, conversation within that topic, you can get to something that looks social. But it, that's a lot of work. And then at the bottom here, we have the um, what it looks like on the home page. Um, but like how much more inviting is it when you see just right out in the open? you know, somebody, a picture of somebody in their post, and it's just right there for you to reply to, things like that. It just, it just seems uh, like, you know, with community being created through the forum, so you got to kind of make them do it, you know, while the common tool is out in the open and it could happen naturally. Um, so that's why I said that the common tool is, it's not, I'm not trying to say that this fixes every community issue and that all of a sudden your students are going to use your course site and love it more than they like Instagram and Snapchat or anything like that. Not that crazy. However, I think that having this stuff out there, the students are accustomed to these social media type, scrolly, scrolly type things. And, um, and so in, in this example that I'm showing here is a course where they were talking about the, a topic of drug addiction that's coming up and, and the instructor was kind of nudging. And I always suggest that instructors nudge people to, um, to use this thing. And so the students are talking about uh, TV shows that featured to this topic and then the, the instructor engaged them in conversation and students also engaged each, uh, each other. Um, some of the customs that I think enhance uh, the use of this that um, that our developers here have added are um, there's a checkbox here where you can make this a high priority post which will make it so that instructors who check that box and send that out it'll also It'll get posted into the site like a normal comments post, but it also goes to their email. And uh, then there's also the ability for um, uh, site members to like a post, and then you could look at the list of people that like this. Now, here's, I, I typically do use forums still in class, um, but I will supplement it with the use of um, comments, but I no longer use announcements at all because I just post my announcements here. It goes out there to their email, and then the, I think it's better because the students can respond to my announcement in line in the, um, in the course site if they would like to. And so it, it kind of makes it much more dynamic. I believe um, Canvas's announcements tool works in a similar way. Um, 
here's an example of students asking questions in the common store. A student had a question about, um, you know, uh, copyright on images and things like that. And other students came in and helped answer the question. You can see that um, here the original asker liked this response from a student so that the students are using it um, to help each other. Um, a nice story is we have a teaching English as a foreign language course where it's a cohort of students that are in Mexico and they really used it. Like I, I didn't, I could post a whole lot of stuff about this. They, they kind of would encourage each other to come to do their work and kind of share stuff. And, um, and just kind of, it, it was just really nice for people to, um, to interact because it was completely asynchronous and this was kind of their way to, um, you know, participate and and they just kind of did it on their own it again it was natural authentic community um i teach a web development course and um, i had nine students and i decided not to use forums or announcements at all did the whole thing um using uh the commons tool and uh I, and i felt the wiki was appropriate because it was a web development course and that is you know something that it'd be good for them to have exposure to that and uh and, and i thought it was really successful um, students, I, I, I like to have students do a lot of video posts and, and talk about topics of video. And so that right on the front page, a student sees another student's face in a video thumbnail and they can watch it. I mean, I think it's much more likely that a student will watch something that they're not required to watch if it's right there out in the open. Um, the idea of requiring a comments post, I, some instructors have done this. I've done it myself a little bit. You know, it can work. It can get a little clunky if you have a, a large amount of students, because, I mean, that's a lot of scrolling. Like I said, students are kind of good at, good at that. You know, and I, th I think there's students might have this passive thing where if you, you know, if they're unconscious, I think their natural state is to be scrolling anyway. And um, and, and like I said, it, it looks really good with video posts. You can po post images and and uh files and web links, all kinds of things are really nice to put in there. Um, but I, I always suggest like, as the instructor kind of create moments, create these moments where you can uh, engage the students on there. Don't do, don't overdo it or else it'll kind of get lost and just kind of be noise. All right. And so that is my slides. I think that was five minutes or so. And so let me know if you have any questions and I'd be happy to answer them. You did well. <laughs> so there are some questions. Um, one one series of questions sort of has to do with accessibility. Would you like to comment on that? Yeah, uh, I would have to double check. So I assume we're talking about accessibility of graphics that are put in there. I assume so. That was uh, Tiffany that asked that question. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, like if a picture was put in there, I would say, a, and it was just a picture, that would probably not be accessible. And so I tend to do that really rarely. Um, it's more a, a video link or text is the typical thing where, like, mm -hmm. you know, anything that's a link, you're going to, it'll click and it will just open up. Right. Okay, um, another series of questions had to, has to do with how does one go about adding this to a site? Um, Adrian said it's a tool, but it can also be put in um, and you, you have to add it using the sites tool. So there we go. They, Adrian's kind of answered the question in a way. It's it's not something that, that regular folks can do. Yeah, it can, it can um, you know, your Sakai instance, you know, depending on your level of control could be modified where everybody could do it. And at University of Dayton, we have it as a um as a one it's a default option with our standard template and it also is something that somebody could add we have a little overview manager widget that a uh, instructor can add it to their home page but yes like i think out of the box you have to do it with a with a sites tool um some people keep the tool and in the, in the left hand tool menu for those cases where they want to see it kind of more full screen rather than kind of in that side car right. thing. Okay. And the last point, uh, because we're just about out of time here, is Wilma posted a, a, a YouTube video. It's a little farther up there um, showing uh, Commons uses, you know, good, a good faculty showcase for that. So um, if you're interested in more about that, check that out as well. Any final comments, Paul, before we move on? Uh, nope. 
No, I, I just said I, I've had really good response in the courses I've taught myself using this. I, I've noticed the much more natural interaction and that's why I um, felt the need to uh, share this with all of you. So Excellent. We thank you. Appreciate it.